My name is James Malone, and I am the Chief Financial Officer at Community Capital Management. Community Capital Management is an impact investment manager uh, based in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And we have been in business for about 24 years, um, helping our investors uh, to align their investments with their values. Um, at this time, um, I'm going to jump right into what we're going to talk about. Uh, it's a subject matter that has been in the news quite a bit, uh, ESG investing. Uh, it's um, Some people call it other names, sustainable investing, and we'll go over that in the presentation. Uh, but my hope is today is that you will be able to walk away knowing a little bit more about what it is, um, um, how you could participate um, in, in it and understanding its value and why it just makes sense to invest in with this approach. So let's get into it. So before I begin going into depth about ESG, we got to talk about what it is. And there's a lot of terminologies out there, a lot of nomenclature out there about it. And uh, from impact investing, sustainable investing, green investing, mission-related investing, what does it all mean? Um, my focus is going to be on ESG and impact investing. ESG has three components, E for environmental, S for social, and G for governance. This is an investment approach where investors will take in consideration factors related to the environment, to social, that includes um, um, how, how a company may treat their employee, how are they dealing with the community, and governance, um, how are they dealing with the board, the management structure, um, how, how you know, the composition of the board. So these factors are considered in the investment decision. Impact investing is a little bit more specific and targeted, where you're looking to solve a societal challenge and at the same time get a rate of return. But when you put all of these together, sustainable investing, value-based investing, mission-related investing, faith-based investing, um, ESG investing, it comes down to this big, broad area that says, we're looking to generate social and or environmental impact while at the same time getting a financial return. Uh, this next slide basically shows that there's been a long history of sustainable investing. Many people would think that it's this new thing that we're doing in the last few years, but I can tell you for centuries, sustainable investing has been there way back from the 1700s, 1800s. Uh, for example, the Quakers, um, they shunned the slave trade and was boycott boycotting sugar and not allocating resources to the sugar economy way back then because they wanted to make sure slavery was abolished. That's a form of responsible investing. Um, and all the way up to the 1980s, where we had the major um, anti-apartheid movement, uh, uh, led by uh, a lot of faith-based organizations and other types of organizations saying, we want to um, invest in a way that does not support something that we think is not good for the economy and not good for uh, our world and our community. Uh, so this has been happening for centuries. And today we are about $17 trillion uh, is in currently invested in a way that somehow incorporates sustainable or ESG um, investing approach. Uh, this slide shows that clearly um, the, the entire marketplace is about 51 trillion, but yet still um, a, a good percentage, over 20 something percent of the marketplace um, uh, of the investing universe is invested with some sort of sustainable investing um, approach. Uh, it's been significant growth over the years. You can see that in the chart. The point I want you to take away from this slide is that 
sustainable investing and ESG investing and responsible investing is happening right now. And Morgan Stanley has done studies on it that show that 99% of millennials say that they're interested in it. So if you are not incorporating this in your investing approach or, or your portfolio somehow, you might be missing out in um, something that is rapidly growing uh, in the investing community. This next slide allows us to talk a little bit about getting understanding the spectrum of investing. So you would want to, uh, on one hand, one end, the, the, um, the left-hand side, you see uh, pure social. And on the right, you have pure profits. So let's start with pure profits. We know what that is. You're investing in a company, in a project, in a deal, in something where you're just looking to make money. You don't care what it does. You're not really worried about um, any sort of societal impact. You're just looking to make money from it, pure profit. On the other hand, and you're looking for pure social. You don't want to make anything on it. You want to just have a social impact. So starting from the left hand, pure social, that's philanthropy, um, where you're looking at charitable contributions, grants, and you want to take your own dollars and give it in a way that you're making a difference in the community. You don't expect a return on investment or a return of your investment. You are just doing something philanthropic. Um, coming in one more, you have concessionary, where you're looking to get a return of your capital, but not necessarily make a lot of money, but you want to make a huge impact. And, and you, as you move in, you're looking to, to have an impact, but at the same time, you're looking for financial return. Coming from the other end, you see that moving from pure profit, you will just say, I want to negatively screen out some sin stocks like tobacco, alcohol. I don't want to invest in those. I want to invest in gambling because I don't think it's good for the community. And when you do that, you're just screening out certain companies. But at the same time, you're looking to make as much money as you possibly can. And then in the middle, you have ESG integration and positive best-in-class screening, where your investments are selected for positive ESG performance relative to your peers. So that gives you a sense of the spectrum of investing. Now, I, I feel it's important for me to just take a minute to talk about some of the myths and some of the realities that are out there versus reality that's out there with respect to ESG and impact investing. Some say that impact and ESG investing sacrifice your financial performance. So you're gonna give up returns when you do this. The truth is that impact and investment strategies require you to have a little bit of extra research and that can help you reduce the overall risk of your investment. So a lot of times you look and you have a better risk-adjusted return or competitive risk-adjusted return that's very much equivalent to other traditional type of investing. Um, the other myth that's out there is that sustainable investing is still too new of a concept and it's not proven at all in the marketplace. The truth is, uh, as I showed you for years, folks have been investing this way, uh, but um, the US CIF Foundation that's really focused on sustainable investing has been putting out trans reports since the 1990s. And they have been talking about this. Today, we have so many managers. I think um, as of 2020, there was 836 registered investment companies with assets um, that has an ESG uh, or impact investing approach. And um, the, the calculations, the sum said is around $3 trillion that's being invested by registered investment companies uh, with that way. So that's a myth that it's a new concept and not proven, proven out there. 
And then the third is in, impact investing is only for millennials and young people who just have this idea of doing great things. Statistics show that people of all ages are in, interested. Morgan Stanley did a study and they found that yes, 99% of millennials are interested in impact investing, but they also found that 84% of women are um, and six, uh, are interested and 67% of men indicate that they have an interest in sustainable investing. So that's it. So this slide shows uh, some examples of the types of impact investments that we have made at our firm, but others can make as well. Uh, and this is, the first one is environmental sustainability. So if you're making an investment in environmental sustainability, it could be something like investing in solar energy in different ways, uh, retrofitting buildings, investing in a project that's helping to do that, or investing um, in, in a bond that is backed by solar loans where people are able to take out a loan to help put a solar panel on their, their home. So uh, these types of investments are very common these days, but that's an example of an investment you could make in um, that will focus on environmental sustainability. The other area is affordable home ownership. That is one of my favorite areas because I believe that one of the main reasons for the wealth gap in the United States, the racial wealth gap, where um, black and brown communities have a huge gap in wealth compared to, to the white, uh, white counterpart, has to do with home ownership, where for, cent for years and decades we've been shut out from home ownership. Uh, now you can make an investment where you are driving capital to minority communities and underserved communities and black and brown individuals where they can get their first home, where they can uh, invest in that home in their community and begin to build wealth. Um, so we invest in mortgages and other areas that promote home ownership. The other area is a uh, healthy community. So that can go across the gamut from um, uh, neighborhood revitalizations to something as simple as sustainable agriculture or healthy foods, where you invest in a business that is making themselves available in areas that might be um, or previously be considered food deserts. Uh, so, Investing in, in healthy foods uh, is another way. And then uh, affordable um, multifamily housing, affordable and attainable multifamily housing. We invest a lot in that. And it's one of the, the ways you can invest um, that would not only provide a roof over someone's head, but also provide a place where they, they can grow, where um, they may have amenities around financial literacy. They may have community programs around that affordable housing development um, that would allow families to thrive um, rather than just um, living in, in, in a building. So these are some of the areas that we have had investments that promote positive outcomes and, and, and can be considered impact investing. Our next slide. Really, um, there's been a lot in the news and I, I would not want to go through this presentation around ESG rather uh, and not address that. Um, and every day you may see something in the news around that's being anti-ESG or pro-ESG. And um, recently, um, the governor announced legislation to protect Floridians from what is called woke ESG uh, investing. And, um, you know, parts of that is looking to make sure that the um, state and local governments are not issuing bonds uh, that has some ESG considerations or uh, uh, pension plans are not uh, incorporating ESG into their, their, um, their investment decisions. 
And, you know, that's particularly a view to, to make sure that you're getting the best return on your investments and so forth. But on the other hand, um, the Florida government legislature just passed the bill called the Live Local Plan Bill that seeks to ease Florida's affordable housing crisis. And they have about 1.5 billion um, earmarked for, for this, um, for investments in, into low interest loans in affordable to affordable housing developers. And one of the things I want to point out on this slide, and I know it's small and you can't see it, that at the same time as there is conversation around being anti-ESG, but the, the Florida, um, the state of Florida is issuing bonds that are labeled social bonds targeting the housing crisis, um, whether they're homeowner mortgage revenue bonds or homeowner um, multifamily tax exempt mortgage backed bonds. That's really going to address a societal problem around housing. Therefore, it's dealing with the social part of the ESG and can be considered a positive impact investment opportunity. So um, the takeaway on this slide is a lot of times you hear in the news and there is this issue and conflict and anti and pro there is real no controversy there. All investment is um, impact investing. The question is, are you being intentional about it? And are you, which societal problem are you looking to, to, to address? This slide really um, helps with the question, what do I do? Um, many of us are, um, wondering how can I invest in this? Uh, if you are not talking to your financial advisor about it, please do so. Um, this is not a session where we will go through each different ways of investing, but um, the they, these are organizations and advocates and thought leaders that can help you. So if you go on the US SIP website, they have a list of different in, um, uh, impact investing sustainably invest in solutions out there. Um, the GIN, the Global Impact Investing Network. Uh, again, talking to your financial advisor that will be able to point you in a, in a direction. Or maybe just going on the website and looking at apps like Betterment that would allow you to sort out different types of options around ESG. Uh, so this, if you take a picture of this slide, that would help you in terms of looking at some of their website and they can direct you to how you can you could um, have impact investing. Then the last thing I'm going to do here in terms of takeaways is summarize what I think is important. Younger generation and high net worth investors are increasingly demanding ESG investments, and that's where a lot of assets will be going over the next several decades is in this area of intentional investing that's having a positive impact in the society um, and in our communities and the world at large. The other point is this approach in investing allows you to align your investments with your values and having some intentionality about it. The third thing is if you have an interest in diversity and equity and inclusion and promoting all of the positive um, factors from that, investing with, with an ESG lens and an impact investing lens allows you to promote economic justice and to promote diversity, equity, and inclusion. And then the last thing is we help companies by investing this way, you help companies to make the right decision and you hold them accountable. And when companies do the right thing by not just focusing on shareholders, but focusing on all the stakeholders, employees, the community, et cetera, it's a win-win. You have happy employees, you have happy stakeholders, and you have a happy community. And with that, I encourage you to 
research more about impact investing, about sustainable and ESG investing, and make the first step in um, being intentional about your investment dollars. And you see my information here. You can reach out to me with any questions or uh, comments or anything um, here, uh, and we can talk more about it. Thank you so much for your time and enjoy the rest of the conference. Hey everyone, Andrew Koenig here, CEO of City Furniture. Proud to be with you all at the Ready to Lead conference. At City, we take great pride in creating a diverse, equitable, and inclusive organization. We believe creating a diverse organization really truly empowers our business to be much stronger, much better. And uh, um, it's the right thing to do. So we work at this all the time. So it's really cool to see everybody here at this conference and really striving and creating the type of work culture that we all want to be a part of. So while you're at the conference, please take some time to stop by the Ready to Lead Career Center, uh, powered by City Furniture, and explore uh, other businesses and other companies that share our passion to create a diverse and inclusive world. Take care, everyone.